Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at this CPA exam question, which can be a multiple choice or a simulation that deals with property tax revenue. And simply put, we need to, re to understand how to compute property tax revenue for a governmental entity for a particular year 20x2. For that physical year 20x2, Chester County levied 510 million in property taxes. The county collected taxes applicable to that particular year as follow. June 1st, 20x1 through September 30th, 20x1, 20 million. So here's what you have to know. Just basically, this is year X1 and this is year X2. Now, the year ends September 30th. So this is the year end, September 30th. So we are looking from September 30th, X1, till September 30th, X2. So this is the area that we are looking to figure out how much revenue was collected. Now, the first thing we did is we levied the taxes, 510 million. When we levied the taxes, the government has the right to collect the money. Believe it or not, at this point, we have a receivable. Yes, you do record property tax revenue as a receivable. So the first thing you have to do is you're gonna, you're gonna book a receivable for 510 million property tax receivable, and you are going to credit, not revenue, the third inflow of resources. Not yet, but it's gonna become revenue later. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So yes, we do have receivable when it comes to property tax revenue. Why? Because even if the owner of this property sells their property, the new owner will have to pay the taxes. Now for the sake of simplicity, we are not going to assume any allowance for this example. But for the 510 million, when we levied it, when the government says now legally now you have to pay it, we have the right to collect it from you. Well, it's a receivable. Now, June 1st through September 30th, so in this area here, in this period, even before the year started, here in this area, some taxpayer paid the 20 million. That's great. Well, some people do prepay their taxes. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. That's fine. But it's not revenue until the year kicks in. So when they pay, when those individuals prepay their taxes, because they paid from June till September, even before the physical year kicks in, we debit cash, we credit the third flow of resources. It's not revenue yet. But when is it going to be revenue? Well, with, when the year kicks in, well, we are in 20x2. When What we do is we debit this number, the third inflow of resources, to remove the deferred inflow, and we credit property tax revenue. And this is part of the answer. So it's going to be 20 million for sure of revenue will be recorded in 20x2. So we took care of this 20 million. Now, from October through September, we collected 450 million. So we are looking at this period here. We collected 450 million. Great. When we collect money, we debit cash. We credit a receivable. Since we set up a receivable, we credit the receivable. Now we can turn the deferred inflow of resources into actual revenue. So we are going to debit the deferred inflow of resources for 450 million and credit property tax revenue 450 million. Again, we are looking for revenue. This is another piece of revenue. So, so far we have a revenue of 450 plus 20. Are we done yet? No, we took care of this 450 million. October 1st, X2 through November 30th, X2 was 12 million. So let's take a look at the time the timeline here. And we're looking in this period here. In this period, we collected 12 million. How, how are we going to account for this 12 million? Is it part of revenue or not? Here's where the modified accrual comes into place. Modified accrual basis. We said we have 450 plus 20. We recognize revenue when... It's measurable and available to finance expenditure in the current period. Well, what does that mean? Let's assume 
um, sometime in October, sometime in October X2, we had an expenditure. Okay, and this expenditure will not be paid. Usually they give you 30 or 60 days until November 15th on 20 X2. So November 15th, so I'm just making this example. You're going to see why I'm putting the dates. November the 15th, we're going to be also receiving cash. So notice the expenditure took place in 20 X2. The cash that we're going to be receiving in 20, it's going to be outside the period of 20 X2, but it's going to be coming to finance 20 X2 expenditure since the money will be available. And what we assume is this, we assume that 60 days after year end, money will be coming and that money will be financing expenditure that took place in that particular year. And that's that, and the government really knows about this, why? Because if this is where they prepared their financial statement, let's assume they prepared their financial statement September 30th. This is where the year end, not when they prepared it. If this is the year end, it may take them a month or two or three months. The government take their time in preparing their financial statement. So they will know in the next 60 days whether they're going to be receiving money that's going to help finance expenditure that took place in that particular year. So what does that mean? So it means 60 days after year end, any cash that we collected, we assume it's going to be financing expenditure in that prior year. So although the money was collected, notice the money was collected through from October 1st through November 30th, year X2, which it means it belongs to X3 fiscal year. It doesn't matter. We're going to include this in year in year X2. Now, what are we going to do? At the end of the period, if we can estimate this number, if we can estimate this number, what we're going to do, we're going to debit the third inflow of resources of 12 million, and we are going to credit property tax revenue of 12 million. Why do we do that? Because we know most likely that we are going to receive this money and we know we're going to be using this money to finance expenditure. Therefore, if it is, if it's measurable and available to finance expenditure, it's revenue. Therefore, we're going to recognize this as revenue. When we actually receive the money, when we actually receive the money, we debit cash, we debit cash and we credit the deferred inflow of resources. So basically the deferred inflow of resources is basically gone. And what we have is 12 million of cash 12 million of revenue. Now, what happened too, as I told you, the government may not prepare their income tax, uh, their financial statements until two, three years, two, three months after, not years. <laughs> That's, I don't know, maybe some of them do. Uh, two, three months after the year end. Now, none of them can wait years, but the point is they can take their time. So what happened is we can wait, we can wait until that revenue. If we don't want to book this entry, we can wait until we receive the cash, we can debit cash and credit revenue of 12 million or what we can do we can basically book the revenue and wait for the cash again depending on when the government wants to do that but that's another 12 million of revenue that's counted last but not least december 20 december 20 x2 we collected 2 million that belongs to 20 x2 well guess what that money is not available to finance expenditure 60 days after year end. So December is 60 days after. Now, in your CPA review course, they may say consider 90 days after. So you have to be careful. Typically, it's 60 days, but if they give you some other date, that some other number of days, you have to be aware of this. But this three, 3 million does not belong. We cannot report it as revenue in year X2, in year X2. So, the revenue is 450 million, 20 million, which is 470, plus 12 is 482. Therefore, property tax revenue for X2 that's going to be reported is 482 million. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional resources, exercises, multiple choice, true false, lectures that's going to help you understand governmental accounting, modified accrual basis. This is an important topic. Whether you are an accounting student, CPA candidate, or studying for some sort of an accounting certification, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.